Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 29 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. Okay, now we're going to start talking about compasses, calipers, and triangles. Uh, this is not necessarily widely known or understood. There's a lot of people that have heard about it. There's a lot of people that have seen pictures. There's been some videos posted over the years um, of people using swinging a compass to enlarge or reduce or even reverse like a full round statue. Um, and, uh, but uh, they're not out there now in any great amount. I don't know if there's, I hadn't found any more on YouTube. There's some people that talk about it like it's a lost art, nobody knows, and they're glad to sell you a seminar for 800 or 1,000 bucks and bring somebody from half around the world to show you how to do it. There's no need to do that. We know how to do it. We've been doing it in Vermont for over 100 years. And uh, I was trained during my apprenticeship on how to use the compasses and how to use the triangles. Um, there's a couple of different approaches, whether you use uh, what type of triangle you use or how it's set up, how it's constructed. Um, and uh, it's, it's amazingly powerful and it's not complicated. It's not fast, but it's, you have to do it very accurately. Uh, the big benefit is that basically you can take someone that's completely illiterate um, and they, they can be a fan, produce fantastic results with this method. You never have to put pen to paper and do mathematical calculations. You can do incredibly complicated work um, that you'd never be able to, to match with, with numerical calculations. And uh, so you end up using the function of the apex angle of an isosceles triangle or the primary angle of a, of a, of a triangle in order to um, define a relationship between two values. And because of that, that triangle, because of that angle, um, that determines what one value is in comparison to another. Uh, and it's really amazing. Um, so uh, we're going to start with uh, uh, talking about the actual tools themselves, the hard parts, the, the, tr the calipers or the compasses. Uh, there's people out there that use compasses or use calipers with sculpture work. Um, and it's one of those things where my wife says that I've got to be polite because they're not using them the way I would use them. And they're, it's, it's, you know, um, kind of like when you got a hammer, everything looks like a nail, you know, just because you can use it that way doesn't mean that's the most productive way to use it. So I want to show you how to use them the right way and the way to get the most benefit out of them and explain some of the pitfalls that you get into with them. And, uh, and then after we go through the actual compasses and calipers, then we will work on showing you how to construct your triangle for whatever you want to do, whether you want to enlarge it or reduce. Um, and I'll show you some proofs in terms of, you know, to show you what I'm saying and why it works. And, uh, and then eventually, uh, once the angel's here, we're going to be enlarging a model into stone with the compasses and a triangle. Um, but before we do that, I have to produce a model that's not only, when you produce a full round piece of statuary and you enlarge it, you enlarge it in its entirety and there's no foreshortening. When you foreshort something and you compress detail, you have to be, if you enlarge that, if you enlarge it at, um, just an indeterminate rate, then you you can compromise that foreshortening because if you enlarge something that's foreshortened and say it's it's uh, foreshortened three inches and you enlarge it to a certain height, but you've only got, say I was going to enlarge it to a, a value, it was three inches foreshortened and I was going to enlarge it to an amount that would make it nine inches foreshortened. 
but I've only got eight inches of room of foreshortening for foreshortening. So that would truncate that foreshortening and it would either make it look like something was cut off, which would make it look very false or artificial, or I'll lose material that I expected to keep. With this angel, this angel is going to be an eight inch profile and she's going to be five and a half feet tall. And so I've got to make sure that when I produce my model that it's, it's corrected both in terms of foreshortening and overall height in order to meet that goal of having a nice job that's, that's five, six tall and that's 08 in profile. So I'm going to use my triangle. We're going to set the triangle up early so that I can calculate a few dimensions in terms of how much I need to foreshorten and for the approximate amount that I'm, I'm making the angel in terms of height. And we'll work from there so I've got a parameter to work within. And then it'll make enlargement or no problem because I'm only going to make the model about four feet tall just because that's, it gets up into the realm of where it's still manageable for me to handle without being too difficult. So let's look at some compasses and, uh, and then we'll talk about how to actually make some compasses and that that you'll use and um, some of the benefits and some of the problems. So um, let's take a look on the wall. Now, these are old Italian composite compasses, most of them. I think there's, a, there's one or two in there that are just sort of what they are. These are ones I got from Dario. Um, and we'll, we will use these, but there's some, some benefits and some, some issues with them. Uh, and so I want to talk about all that. An alternative to these traditional Italian compasses or calipers, Italian sculptors, calipers, are these beam compasses. Now, these beam compasses are, I don't want to say they're kind of a trade secret. I don't think most people care. Um, but I've got that set, this rack, and then we've got a few more on the other side of the stand here. We've got this rack of compasses. And so let's grab a few of these off the wall, take them over to the table, and I'll start explaining to you just what the benefits of each design is and how we're going to make some. Okay, by definition, a caliper measures a thickness, okay? That's what a caliper does. If you wanted to measure the thickness of this cup, you would measure the lid like this. That's what a caliper does. A compass measures, it's easy to do on this, a compass measures a radius. So you can use the same tool for either one. And then there's people like us that are lazy and we end up using the same word interchangeably. The problem arises when people are carving, say we're going to carve this coffee mug, and they take their caliper, and they measure that, then they go over to their stone, and they just hold it on there to see if it's the same size. Well, great. The problem is, is that actual, this dimension may exist exactly where it needs to exist, or it may be crooked, or it may be off-center, it can exist anywhere. And that's the problem. When you see somebody that takes a pair of calipers and they measure the mouth or an eye or an ear, and then they go over to their stone and they hold it up and they measure it, that only has about so much value because that mouth could be skewed. It could be rotated. It could be out or in. You don't know where the placement's not right. 
So when we do it with sculpture, when we do it the correct way, we'll have foundation points just like we do with a pointing machine and we'll take our measurements from a specific place that's the only place we measure from and we'll measure to that to that detail on the job. And I didn't get a model off the wall because I want to get a ladder out and I want to show you how to do this later on. Now that one measurement's not going to tell you much. So we have to do it so you can do it with just two measurements and see where they meet, where they cross, but that still isn't necessarily the best thing to do. It's best to do it with three, and you have three dimensions, three measurements from three foundation points that each go to the same singular point. And what you're doing is you're defining three spheres or three radii using the radii that, de that describe three spheres and how they unique, uniquely relate to each other because they will intersect in a very specific place. And when they all come together, you will have a point. It will be an intersection. So you'll end up carving until you get to that point. You put your dot, you go do the next one. Okay, so that's great if you're gonna do it in one-to-one -one scale. But if you're going to say you want to enlarge something, make it bigger, or you want to reduce something and make it smaller, or even if you want to carve a mirror image, because my cousin Andy did the twins, he did a pair of mirror image statues like this during my apprenticeship right beside me. It's really cool. Even Juliana said he'd heard about it, but he'd never seen it done. Well, Andy did it. So I got a full lesson on that. All done with calibers and the triangle. So in order to enlarge a model or reduce a model, we take a measurement with a caliper from a foundation point, just like I said, and then we can manipulate it with the triangle, use the triangle to manipulate that measurement and enlarge it. Now, Andy's really smart. And he pays attention. And the problem with these compasses, these old style ones, is that even if they open up a lot to capture a fairly big thing, say for instance, I was trying to capture a point that was over here because there was something sitting on this side. If I came down from my foundation point, I hit the cup. So I can't do it. It interferes. Well, there was a postcard. This is why you got to pay attention to everything. Remember, I told you to be observant. You got to pay attention and look at everything. Look at all these books. Look at all this different stuff. There was a postcard of Alcidi Fantoni at Rock of Ages working on a statue. And he's doing it the old way. He, you know, he cut it long, so he had to kind of have to cut the joint afterwards because the joint's got all the saw marks across the head grain and everything. Up in Barry, he had a few of these. And I'll try to stick it up here. I've got it hanging on the wall in my office. He had a bunch of these bean calipers hanging, laying on his stone. So Andy figured it out. He took the bean caliper. Now it's real easy to reach the other side of that coffee cup because there's plenty of clearance here. Really cool. Dante Rossi did the same thing. I believe the picture of him working on the Mercedes has some bean calipers on it. Uh, maybe not, but I think it does. Um, these are shop made tools. You don't buy them anywhere. All they are, <laughs> and literally, like this one, some of this stuff, this is from the building I tore down here. A little bit of a building when I tore everything off. I built my studio. You take a pair in the, st in the old stone sheds. Remember what I told you you can't use a straight edge to check your level or you're flat on a stone 
because it'll ruin your carpenter's square because it'll round them all off like this. But what you do is you get your old worn out, rounded off carpenter squares and you cut it off right here. And then you cut it diagonal, just like this. Then you drill a couple holes in them, you shape the ends the way you want. Some pretty straight, some you work over your anvil or whatever, back of the vise, and bend them a little bit so they're nice and sharp. You want these things to be needle sharp because the sharper the point is, the more accurate they are. And then all you have to do is take a piece of plywood or a board, cut a slot in it, put a carriage bolt, put a wing nut and a washer on there, and you've got a, a beam cowl. And you can do so much with these things. See, I even put that one in backwards because sometimes that's the better reach. You can reach something better that way. You never know what's going to make it work the best. So they're very convertible. You know, I don't need to have one make any that are eight feet long because if I need one that's, say, six foot long, I could just take this one out, bolt that together, and now I got a great big giant long one. So they're so valuable, they're so versatile, they're just fantastic. So, these are beam calipers or beam compasses, you know. And these are used to capture your measurements. Now, and then to apply them once you've calculated the new measurement, the new dimension. So, make several of them. Make a couple of sets because you're going to need for every point that you that you shoot that you take and shoot you're going to need one compass to capture it and one to translate to apply okay because you can't take you have to keep your old one just in case you bump your tool while you're oh well now i got to redo it okay if i keep my old compass set to the dimension the measurement that i took until I'm done producing that new point, I've still got this so I can go and apply this to my triangle again. So I've got to have, and if I'm doing three, three radii, I've got to have six compasses to use every time I shoot a point. So you've got to have a few of them. I made up some that were rounded Okay, can you see this is round? Then I made up that are notched, and I made some that were square. And see the square ones, I put a black stripe on it just so I could keep track of it. And then we found a few more old carpenter squares, because old carpenter squares are cheap. They're all boogered up, they're junk, throw them away. And I just made some straight ones. And so, now I've got plenty of, and I made these really thin, so I've got plenty of compasses that I'm not going to get confused or run out. Um, some of these Italian compasses um, are pretty nice. They've got wonderful smooth hinges. What will happen is these joints, these are um, laminated forging, so they've got a finger joint. And what will happen, people try to, they'll loosen up, and they'll hit it with a hammer, and they'll break them. Um, the other bigger problem is that they'll, the brass shims in here will wear, and as you go back and forth, they end up becoming loose, and they'll stick out, and it's like, literally like a razor blade sticking out, and they will lay you open, you'll bleed like a stuck pig, and then you got to do something so not to get on the stone. The danger is when they get a loose spot in the hinge 
or they won't hold their shape very well. And a lot of times if they're, when they're, there's a certain range where they were used a lot and they'll be really soft and you really can't use it that well. So you may be able to, to use them, you may not, but um, these, are, these are expensive. You can make your own, just, you can literally just use some of these ends and bend them in about the same way and make your own compasses. It's not rocket science. Put a nut up here with, you know, maybe a bolt with a nylock and, a, and some washers and stuff, some brass washers to lubricate it and uh, play with your tension so that they, they open and close good and they don't have too much resistance so that you can get to those real fine dimensions. Now you can do a lot of your adjustment like this and then you'll end up tapping them to get it down to just, see this one's got a piece of stuff sticking out right there that I just got my finger on. I didn't get cut, but that's not cool. So you've got to really pay attention because you can't bleed on the stone, that's bad. And some of these big ones, like that really big one I've got back there like this, has got a lot of flex in it. So it flexes without moving and that slows you down. So, um, but I know I haven't talked about the triangles yet. Uh, I wanted to introduce these to you first and help you understand what the compasses are. Now, I, like my wife says, she don't want me to be inappropriate. I'm sure there's going to be people that ask me or that are curious about the proportional calipers that look like a cross and you can, you can, you know, they're, they're sort of made like this to where you can adjust the point to where if you open a little bit on one end, it opens more or less on the other end. There's none of those here. Okay. None. And there were none of them in the studios where I apprenticed none. Okay. We don't use them. When you're doing a straight, you know, if you're going to multiply something or whatever by, you know, you're going to enlarge it by a factor of three, one, two, three along a straight line and then capture that dimension. You just need a straight line. So if you think having that fancy caliper there is, is really great, look at how sharp the points are. An awful lot of those have got rounded points. They're very blunt. That means they're not accurate. They might be accurate for measuring a thickness, like on something you're turning on a lathe, because that front part, the, just the very edge of that tangent on those round ends is going to capture the dimension. In terms of sculpture, they're really not that beneficial. Um, you want to use them? Have at it. Don't ask me about them, because I don't do them. I don't have anything to do with them. So, and I don't just take a measurement and hold it up. We will check some things to proof a model because when you enlarge something more than about two times, you start increasing, your errors are enhanced by, by the enlargement. And so we'll go down and, and maybe put a center line on a model and measure from one side to the other, but we do it off of a specific place. We don't just hold it up here and hold it up there and hold it up here and hold it up there. We want to make sure that all these details are correct. So if you go from a specific point on the model, even if it's just the center line with, with a number of dots down there, then you can check it to see if, if arms are the same length, if, if they're accurate, like you can check from, from the midpoint of the chest to the shoulder and then check from the shoulder to the elbow on both sides to see if one's, you know, an eighth or a whatever longer than the other one. And then you've got to correct that. You've got to fix it because you'll just expand that air and it won't look good. Um, but as far as just holding it up and measuring an ear or a hand or something to, to put it on a final job, no, 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 that's, that's not... I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying it's not going to be very accurate because you don't have any point of reference. A ruler needs to have two ends to be accurate. You need to have a foundation point to measure from so you get a consistent measurement uh, because without that, 
it's it's arbitrary where you're starting and where you're finishing. So you make up some compasses if you'd like out of metal. It's not a big deal. Pretty simple. It's even easier to get some wood and some carriage bolts and some old worn out buggered up carpenter square, even if you gotta go to the yard sale, the flea market, cause y'all don't have a stone shed to go to where they're throwing them away. And just take a, you can do it with a hacksaw by hand or a little jigsaw with a metal blade and just strip them right off, cut them in half, drill a couple holes, shape them the way you want. You have a whole bunch of these. Works really, really well. And for the most part, if you have just a regular carpenter square like this, whether you cut it here or here, and then cut a diagonal on it and leave your ends fat, that's plenty of room. That's all I use for all these. Are, these are all made with carpenter squares. And uh, we're gonna put them to, some of them to use on the angel here in short order. Um, but first of all, we're gonna use these to construct our triangle for the job so that I can proof the model as I go along to make sure that it's in the right right foreshortening and the right dimensions so we can enlarge it. So uh, this will wrap up video number 29 of the Virtual Stone Carbon Apprenticeship where we're talking about compasses, calipers, in preparation for enlarging work with the triangles. Thanks for coming in.